This is a special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. We're going to take a look at some products that are actually very remarkable. Uh, we're going to be speaking with the CEO of Parnell Pharma and Par Parnell Pharmaceuticals um, and their, their founder and CEO. Uh, his name is Francis Parnell. He is Dr. Francis Parnell. You're Dr. Doctor, aren't you? <laughs> doctor, Doctor, right. He's an MD and a PhD. Uh, Georgetown Medical School and all kinds of other great places. He's taught throughout the world uh, and he's traveled throughout the world. Uh, doctor, welcome to Late Night Health. Uh, medicine has changed over the years. I mean, we now have something called functional or lifestyle medicine even. And you seem to have embraced this uh, because of your product line. Uh, would that be accurate? Uh, yes, actually, when we started this in 1986, uh, we based it on a natural plant called Yerba Santa that grows up in the foothills in Northern California. And we wanted to develop uh, products for our patients, uh, things that they couldn't, that they needed, but they couldn't get because big pharmaceutical companies were more involved in other uh, projects and other types of uh, uh, drugs and medical devices. So we developed a line of products uh, just basically for our patients. And your 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 partner's your wife. Right. Right. She's, she's a dermatologist. And so we've developed a skin skincare product line as well during that time. And you're a, an ENT a, 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 and surgeon. And right. you did that for over 30 years. You don't see patients anymore? No, I don't see patients anymore. But She's still practicing after 50 years, so uh, she's she, she's the practitioner, and I'm just the drug pusher. Gotcha, I got it. And it's not really drugs; these are all natural products. That the natural talk. products, and technically, to tell you the truth, it's a combination of medical devices. Some of them, is regulatory-wise, they're classified both in Europe and the U.S. as uh, medical devices. Uh, we have uh, what uh, you termed when we were just chit-chatting uh, before we started our conversation, uh, the plague. Uh, and I think that's a real good name for it. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's, it's really crunched everybody, not only in the United States, not only in uh, uh, Northern and Southern California, but worldwide. Uh, and you've developed a couple of products that may help people uh, combat the disease or even prevent the disease. Can you can you tell us about those? Yeah, so it's a, a, a strange way that it, it came about, but uh, a year and a half ago, we licensed in a, a compound from New Mexico Tech University. Uh, and this compound was uh, developed by a cell biologist chairman of the department and by a microbiologist there. And it turned out that the product, which is a compound, which consists of a number of ingredients, uh, all the ingredients are already approved for cosmetic use, both in the US and in Europe, and that they're used in hundreds and hundreds of uh, hair and skin type of products. Uh, so with this combination, they found that it actually killed a lot of these uh, drug resistant pathogens like MRSA and other bacteria and fungi. And we were developing it actually to treat uh, MRSA infections, which is, you know, are pretty common. And uh, in fact, my wife in dermatology sees many patients with MRSA infections. Fortunately, most of them are just limited to the skin and they're treatable. But however, many people die in the ICUs of MRSA, as you know. So anyway, we found this product and licensed it in, ready to do a submission to FDA when, when uh, the pandemic uh, hit and everything shut down. Everybody at FDA was working at home. Uh, everybody, nobody was working. So, and we couldn't proceed with the project basically. So what I did was I s spent time looking for a, a, a level three laboratory that was government approved uh, to do testing on the SARS-CoV-2 virus, just in a chance that it would work because we knew we had done preliminary uh, viral bacteria phase testing at New Mexico Tech and found out it was effective. So long story short is after about six months, 
uh, which included finding a lab and waiting in line and getting the testing done. We found out that this compound, when combined with our existing products, uh, killed greater than 99.9% of the COVID-19 virus. And so the wow. products that we then developed were basically on our existing uh, nasal spray and uh, oral uh, dry mouth spray in our face and body wipes. Now, the fact is that most of the virus enters through the nose. And so that was kind of a uh, fit right into our existing product. And so if, if, you know, God forbid, I'm exposed to COVID-19 and there's two reasons. One, the most important is I'm a big baby. I'm healthy, but I'm a big baby. If I sprain my, my hand or bump something, I cry. Uh, everybody knows that who knows me. How does this work in helping me and others uh, not, not come down with COVID? What it's really doing is it, it works on the virus before it enters the cell. Uh, once the virus enters a cell, basically it's a systemic infection and you can't really do too much for it other than of course the vaccines. Now, if we can reduce the viral load in the nose and the mouth and throat, because it does enter some, you do have some in the mouth and throat. And of course, you know, always talk about the hands, but the main entry of course is the nose, just as it is for any of the viruses. And so basically, what we found was that the mechanism of action of, of this uh, compound is it basically destroys uh, the outer uh, lipid envelope of the virus. So as long as it, it's, it's there, but it hasn't invaded the cell, then we uh, you know, would expect based on the in vitro testing uh, that it would destroy the virus. A, a friend of mine uh, who uses your product uh, told me, tells me that before she walks into a supermarket, she spritzes each nostril twice because it makes her feel better just in case she's exposed in the market. Is that, would that be one application? Exactly. I think before you go out, for instance, uh, we, we, we label it as two sprays each nostril twice a day, but obviously if you only go out in the morning and you're at home after dinner and everything. You don't need to be doing it three times a day. But basically, before you go out and when you're mingling with uh, other people or traveling, uh, it's ideal to use it then, uh, you know, basically to hopefully prevent any, uh, you know, uh, viral load there in your nose. Uh, and it also prevents, helps to, to, to stop MRSA. What about MRSA's a lot of times on the skin and then it gets into the bloodstream and then you have problems uh, of, of that are you know could be as you mentioned before fatal i think that the uh, you know what, when the virus came about and uh, all the attention was directed toward that however uh, a huge amount of attention is being paid by the world health organization and by cdc on developing products to treat uh, basically micro uh, drug resistant pathogens, because many of these bacteria now, because of the overuse of antibiotics, there are many, many pathogens that are very dangerous. And that includes, uh, of course, the MRSA that we talked about, it includes Candida auris, which is a new fungus that was discovered four or five years ago in uh, Japan. Uh, it's very hard to culture. We know that this works for that, as well as Pseudomonas and, and a, a lot of these other uh, type infections. So it's kind of ironic that, uh, you know, even though that's why we licensed it in, uh, and we know that the virus will hopefully be going away, that the real long-term use of, of the uh, Michael DeLenz uh, compound is going to be in uh, treating drug-resistant uh, pathogens, because they all develop resistance. And we have uh, slides, uh, we have, um, they've done many, many cultures in New Mexico Tech that show the development of resistance uh, with many of the uh, medications that are actually approved for uh, use. Uh, um, what about, um, uh, you also have some wipes. Are those also effective in the treatment? Uh, yes, basically they have the same formulation as the, the, the wipes uh, uh, have the same formulation as the nasal spray. Actually, it's a, a saline based uh, with a, 
a, a, a nice uh, wipe for the face and hands because as you remember, everybody's always talking about washing your hands, et cetera, and uh, using uh, alcohol or whatever. But the truth of the matter is soap and water works the best. Uh, alcohol is not as good. Uh, this works basically similar to uh, 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 soap in the sense that it's uh, the way that this mechanism of action. So it's good basically when you can't get soap and water, you can just uh, wipe your hands or your face, whatever, because you're not transmitting it uh, to your nose. So, and I can see with with businesses opening up, and we need the we we need that. I mean, here in California, where you and I are located, uh, the governor has has eased the restrictions, and they're letting uh, I think they're they're letting people eat outdoors. I'm not sure if we have indoor dining yet or not, but you could take one of these wipes and wipe down the table that you're yes you're sitting mm -hmm. at. Definitely. Yeah, although we didn't develop it basically for using for, you know, external surfaces. Uh, you know, there are many uh, other antiseptic products that are useful for that too, you know. But the fact is, the, the, this, this product, essentially, you can look upon it as an antiseptic uh, that you can use topically. And uh, this is kind of the uh, whole mechanism of action. And it's because it was developed in conjunction with your dermatologist uh, wife, uh, it's probably good for the skin. Yeah, it is. Basically, it's got a nice uh, uh, saline uh, glycerin uh, base along with the Yerba Santa. Now, the Yerba Santa, uh, the, the natural product that I have six, we have six patents on it. Uh, the Yerba Santa early on uh, is a real interesting uh, story in itself. Uh, because it was actually used by the Native Americans, uh, you know, many, many years ago. And they used to uh, smoke it actually for asthma, which is hard to believe, but oh uh, that's what they used to do. And But they also made uh, herbal teas to treat bladder infections, sore throats, things like that. Uh, we came across it because I had a patient that had a cancer of the voice box, cancer of larynx. He was uh, in his uh, mid-70s, but... Uh, the interesting thing was that he was uh, a retired PhD food chemist from Del Monte Foods. <laughs> and he got the cancer of the larynx and uh, he couldn't find anything uh, after x-ray treatment and he couldn't find anything that relieved his dry mouth. So he started uh, making an uh, herb tea because his mother used to make an herb tea for him when he was a kid up in, in the foothills in Northern California. So the herb tea helped him. So he started chewing on the leaves and he got dramatic improvement. So he came, at, came to me with it with a, in a decanter with frozen lemon and lime, and he said, here, try this. And so I did. So that was the big beginning of that story, which I thought was pretty uh, amazing. So it took a couple of years to develop the product, which was the uh, mouth cold dry mouth spray, which he was our focus group of one person because it, we only had to please him. We didn't have to please, uh, you know, 200 people in a big focus group. Got so anyway, that, that's why we, we came out with that back in uh, 1986, 87. And so that's still the that basis was one of your for first a lot of the, then. Right. That was one of our first products. And, and we subsequently did other products, you know, that we, we needed. But the, the Yerba Santa story came about because it was unlike a lot of herbal products, which have side effects. Yerba Santa was actually approved by FDA back in uh, the late uh, 1930s because it was used as a flavor for foods for and bad tasting medications, because uh, you may remember that they used to use uh, uh, a lot of uh, quinine type products for uh, malaria. Right. And of course, they, so they used to use uh, Yerba Santa as a flavor. And so technically it's a flavor, but we isolated these natural uh, uh, mucinous substances and glycoproteins. So you can look upon it as like a uh, super aloe, and it, uh, you know, is and how it, it works. And you've got one that you've got the, the mouth, it's called mouth coat. And right. this is for dry mouth. And it would, th this also has the uh, micro delines in it as well. Correct. Right. Exactly. So we added it basically to the nasal spray and the dry mouth spray uh, where it works. And we also have a a topical cream that we did it with 
uh, but we haven't uh, made that up yet because the main the main push right now is to get the product, uh, you know, in the nasal spray primarily. Gotcha. Uh, by the way, if you're interested, and we have this up already on our on our uh, video screen, uh, you'll be able to see parnellpharma.com. That's Parnell pharma.com and you can go there learn more about the company and you can also get some of their products and uh, you can also find some of the products at amazon.com and more products will be available at amazon shortly uh, as production ramps up dr parnell uh, the the um there's a, a dichotomy between natural companies such as yours, and and uh, I'll call them old-fashioned pharmaceuticals. I mean, uh, there's just there is a difference. Um, can you explain that? It, yeah, it's a really process? interesting. It's it's really interesting because a lot of the drugs, as you know, uh, I forget what the percentage of drugs is, but but it's very high. It's I I, I don't know. I think if I remember, it's between sixty and seventy percent of drug products derived from natural substances. And that's still the case. I mean, everybody, I think many people uh, remember the old uh, digitalis. Uh, digitalis in its original form was just a digitalis leaf rolled into a little ball, if you want to look at it that way. And uh, now, of course, it's got all kinds of uh, pills and everything else. But the fact is, a lot of these products uh, came about uh, because of, uh, you know, they're all natural products. Uh, birth control pills, the original uh, derivative was, I think it was uh, sugar beets or something like that. Sweet potato? So, I mean, yeah, sweet Please. potato, something, yeah, whatever it yeah. was. So a lot of these things came about that way. But once you start getting into, uh, the big difference really is the claims. And this is where, uh, as you know, the, the FDA is uh, food and drug. So, you know, you get into the fact that, well, a natural product uh, is, is, is a food. And once you start making all these other claims, it, it becomes a drug, basically, is what happens. So that's kind of how, how it operates. And so there's, there's this overlap. And, and there's also this confusion about it uh, because of the fact that uh, from a regulatory point of view. And then along the way came the Medical Device Act in 1976 which I was involved in originally uh, in working on. And so uh, now we have, uh, you know, we have food, drugs, medical devices, and cosmetics. So it's, you have to be one or the other. And, uh, you know, so there's no other way around it. And, and as, a, as, a, uh, as a CEO of the company, you're always uh, interacting, I'm sure, with uh, the FDA and, and um uh, and and other agencies to make sure that your products are are in compliance. I just received an email earlier today before we started the Natural Products uh, Expo West, which is a, an industry wide um, uh, convention that happens every year in Southern California in Anaheim. They just announced they're going to make it uh, virtual this year and. It's going to be, I mean, they get close to 100,000 people walking through in about three or four days. And I, you've, you've been there, haven't you? No, we should be going to that. Now, the interesting thing, we, we <laughs> wanted to go to the Natural Products East a number of years ago. And uh, I don't know if we got in too late, but a lot of our marketing historically, uh, you know, being a small company uh, early on, we just kind of focused initially on the cancer market. Uh, for the, particularly the dry mouth product uh, and uh, others. So what we did was we just focused on that and we depend on going to trade shows and journal advertising. We don't have a sales force. Now, the fact was we should have been going to the natural product shows <laughs> and, and still should be. Next because, year. <laughs> yeah, because the fact is that just for instance, let the last uh, we depend on trade shows and heavy sampling for the products. And we do have the free samples on the website, for instance, for the dry mouth uh, spray, the mouth coat. Now, we go to about, I'd say 15 trade shows a year, normally, 
the last show that we did was in February one year ago, which was a, a dental show in Chicago. It's a big, uh, they call it the Chicago Midwinter Dental Show. Now, we haven't done anything since. That includes about 12 meetings that we've not gone to, which we normally would be going to, which all have become virtual. Now, we haven't gone to any virtual meetings because I'm still not sure of how, <laughs> how, how they work, to tell you the truth. But we have signed up for one for the first time coming up in Ireland. It's called the Irish Dental Association. So we figured with that one might be kind of, it'll be relatively small and kind of simple and, and, and see how it's going to work. But we haven't quite gotten into that uh, virtual meeting uh, thing other than our own, you know, business and, you know, interviews such as this. But well, it's going to be interesting, but we should be going. There's no question. We should be going to the natural product shows. And that, that's, that shows your uh, uh, a lack of... Uh, marketing skills well that's the uh, the granddaddy of them all it really is i've been to i've been to them for over 30 years and it's uh, it's it's just amazing it it truly is in our our last couple of minutes uh the fact that your products are over the counter uh are they I want people to know that they are still effective. You've done research. You, you, you've already told us you go to the laboratories and, and that they work. We want to make them cost effective. And so as a result, when you hear about the drug prices and, you know, $3,500 for a treatment rem, remdesivir and all these expensive uh, products, our whole idea is to have products that are, are readily available that are over the counter. Uh, we used to have a lot of prescription drug products, injectables, and so on. And in fact, we got a uh, one of only 21 new drugs approved by FDA in 1987, which was a, an injectable for psoriasis, you know, which is a skin condition, mm -hmm. and also for eczema. Now uh, we stopped doing prescription drugs because I thought that you know what if we keep these low cost, relatively and over the counter, that uh, more people would have access to them. Well, I really appreciate your time today and, you know, keep, uh, keep developing products like this. This is terrific if you're traveling and not a lot of, I think the travel industry is down by 66%. Um, and the nasal spray, uh, Pretz, Pretzy MD is, is something that is, I'm going to, when I travel, this is going with me. I'm telling you. Uh, I thank you very much for uh, joining us. And again, if you want information about the product, uh, go to ParnellPharma.com. It's up on your screen right now, ParnellPharma.com. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. Thanks for watching. We'll be back very soon. Thank you. Hold on a second. I'll stop this.